the main reason that Muslims keep on committing the same errors in the month of Ramadan regarding the rules and regulations of fasting is lack of knowledge of the deen, of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the major reason for this lack of knowledge is because most of the Muslims, they do not read the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do not read the Quran with understanding. Neither do they read the hadith, the authentic sayings of the last and final messenger Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What we Muslims should do is read the Quran with understanding, read the sayings of the Prophet and the seer of the Prophet. Then inshallah, at least we will have the basic knowledge of our deen, including the rules and regulations of fasting. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He always opens up His pathway. He gives guidance to the Muslims, but there is a criteria to whom does He guide. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah An Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 69, that those who strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who do jihad fi sabilillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens his pathways for them. So the criteria for us to get the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the criteria for us where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open up our pathways is to strive in his way, to do jihad fi sabilillah. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, Verse number 43, as well as Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, Allah says, Fas alu ahal zikri in kuntum la talam, which means, if you do not possess, or if you doubt, then ask the person who possesses the knowledge. If you doubt anything, ask the person who's knowledgeable. And Alhamdulillah, we have in our ummah several Muslims who are scholars in this thing. So it's our duty to ask these scholars, these people who have the knowledge of Islam regarding the rules and regulations of our deen. As far as fasting is concerned, which is one of the important pillars of Islam, every Muslim should know at least when is the time for fasting, what are the basic rules and regulations, and today, in this age of science and technology, it's very easy to find. It is only the negligence of a Muslim that makes him unaware of these things. It's very easy today to know when is the time for fasting, when does fast begin, when is the time for suhar, when is the time for iftar, for breaking the fast, what are the things that break the fast, etc., etc. It is mainly due to the negligence and ignorance of the Muslims that we regularly keep on falling and committing the same mistakes. Furthermore, what are the common errors that are made by Muslims during the holy month of Ramadan? The common errors committed by the Muslims in the month of Ramadan can be broadly classified into four categories. The first category is the common errors committed by Muslims regarding the obligatory rules and regulations of fasting. The second category is the common errors committed by Muslims which are contradictory to the sunnah of fasting. The third category is the errors committed by Muslims mainly due to neglecting the obligatory duties in Islam and indulging in acts which are prohibited. And the fourth category is the other common errors committed by Muslims in the month of Ramadan. Clearly, Dr. Zaki, it's going to be difficult for us to um, discuss all of the common errors made by Muslims during the month of Ramadan in this one interview. But over the next 32 days, we will, inshallah, try to cover those issues. But could you just um, state or list the most grievous mistakes made by Muslims in the month of Ramadan? As far as the common errors that fall in the first two categories, inshallah, we'll be discussing in detail in the next, inshallah, 30 days. I will, inshallah, speak about the common errors committed in the third and fourth category. Before we discuss categories three and four, can we at least list the most common errors from sections one and two? The 
most grievous amongst the errors in the first category, that is errors committed regarding the obligatory rules and regulations of fasting is. The most common is that Muslims, many a times, they don't do the niyyah for fasting. Intention is very important. Without niyyah, without intention, the fasting is not accepted. So making intention is obligatory. And we'll be discussing this, inshallah, in detail, inshallah, tomorrow. The second error is that many a times, Muslims, even after the Fajr, Azan has started, yet they continue eating. And they think that the end of Suhoor time is only at the end of the Fajr Azan. In fact, the moment the Fajr Azan starts, the moment the beginning of dawn starts, the Suhoor time ends. So this is an error which normally nullifies or invalidates the fast. The third error in the first category is that many people, they delay paying their Zakat al-Fitr. And many times they pay after the Eid al-Fitr Salah. If we pay the Zakat al-Fitr after Eid al-Fitr, then it is like normal charity. It does not come under the Zakat al-Fitr. So these three are the most grievous in the first category. The common errors committed in the second category, that is errors that are contradicting the Sunnah of the fasting is number one. Many people, they skip their suhoor. Some people, they have an early suhoor. That is, they have the suhoor one or two hours before the Fajr time. In fact, suhoor is a blessing. Every Muslim should have it. And the Prophet said, we should delay the suhoor as much as possible. We should have it till just before the Fajr time. The third mistake committed by Muslims in this category is that they delay opening their fast. They delay the iftar. And our Prophet Muhammad said that the people will be good as long as they hasten in breaking the iftar. That means immediately after sunset, they should break the iftar. The fourth common error in this category is that many Muslims, they read unauthentic Dua during iftar. The most authentic dua, as far as iftar is concerned, is Zahab al-Zama, Wabta al Uruku, Wasabat al-Arj, Inshallah. Which means that my thirst is quenched, the veins are moistened, and the ajr is near, Inshallah, God willing. The reward is near, God willing. And some people, when they read this dua for breaking the fast, they say it before breaking the fast. Before they put their date in the mouth, they say this. And it's contrary to the meaning. The meaning says that my thirst has been quenched. Zahab zama wapta lati uruku. My thirst has been quenched and the veins have been moistened. Your thirst cannot be quenched before breaking the fast. So normally it should be said, after you eat the khujur, after you have water and you're satisfied, maybe after some minutes, after you break the fast, then you can eat this dua. Zahab al-Zama, wa uruku, wa al-Ajr, inshallah. Which means, my thirst has been quenched, the veins have been moistened, the reward is near, inshallah, God willing. The sixth common error, made by Muslims in this category, is that many Muslims, they eat excessively during iftar. And many of them even eat throughout the night. The seventh common error is that many of them, they are negligent as far as Tarawi is concerned. Because Tarawi is not a fard, they think it is no problem if a Muslim misses Tarawi. Though Tarawi is not a fard, it's a very important sunnah. And a Muslim, who misses Tarawi is missing a great deal of reward. And many Muslims who perform Tarawi, they read Tarawi very fast, 10 miles per hour. They try and finish it in a short time and they defeat the purpose. In fact, you should read with a moderate pace 
so that people understand and they grasp the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ninth common error is that those who go for itikaf in the mosque, many of them, they socialize during itikaf, as though it's a time to meet people and friends, which is totally contrary to the sunnah. The tenth common error is that many of the Muslims think that the Laylatul Qadr is on the 27th night of Ramadan. And they only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this night. In fact, the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, search for the Laylatul Qadr in the odd nights of the last 10 days, the last Ashra, the 10 days. Therefore, Laylatul Qadr can fall either on the 21st night or 23rd or 25th or 27th or 29th. So this is one of the common errors made by Muslims. The eleventh common error is that they spend their time during Ramadan in unproductive work rather than spending in zikr and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They should spend their time rather for offering besides the compulsory salah, the nawafil, the voluntary salah, the sunnah salah. The twelfth error made by the Muslims is that they should do dua. The thirteenth is they should ask for forgiveness. This is month of forgiveness. Fourteenth is they should read the Quran as much as possible to get the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifteenth is that they fast and they keep themselves hungry, but basically they're not mentally prepared for that fast. And it is as though they are staying hungry. But the main purpose of fasting to acquire taqwa is not obtained. This was in brief regarding the second category. Can you mention briefly, again, categorize the uh, common errors made in the third category? The common errors committed by Muslims in the third category, that is, errors regarding negligence in performing the faraid the obligatory duty in Islam is that Muslims, many of them, they stay awake the full night. They have an early suhr and these people, they do not offer the Fajr Salah. Missing Fajr Salah is a sin. Many of them, because they stay awake the full night, they sleep the full day and they even miss their zuhr and the Asar Salah, which is a grave sin. You're trying to acquire blessings and you are neglecting the obligated duties, which is totally prohibited. Many of the Muslims, they do not give zakat. Those are supposed to give zakat. And zakat is one of the pillars of Islam in which every Muslim who has a saving of the nisab level, that is those who have a saving of 85 grams of gold, 